welcome, my name's Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Today, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to update the firmware on one of these GTEC or CTC clone Prusa machines. Now, a lot of people are having this issue where, if I just take you around the back here and we can have a look at this motherboard, um, this is the GT2560 uh, 3D printer control board. Now, a lot of people are having issues with this. Um, I was unable to update the firmware on this. I, I've looked online and tried to find a lot of guides. Again, I couldn't find much in way of updating the firmware. So everything that I tried ended up with a timeout error and a, uh, I can't remember what it was, it was a timeout and a unable to communicate message and then the sketch would fail to upload. Now, I've since done some research and found out some information about these clone GTEC GT2560s, um, the board. And I'm going to show you now how we go about updating the firmware on that. So I'm going to jump over onto my MacBook. The steps are very similar for Windows. I'll explain in the comment section what the, uh, sorry, not the comments, in the description section of the video what the differences are um, between doing this on a uh, Mac and a PC, uh, Mac and a PC. Uh, we'll get into it just in a second. So I'm just going to swap over now and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I am here on my Mac, and I'm just going to show you what happens if we try and run... Um, this is just version 1.8 that I've downloaded off of the website. I'm just going to show you what happens if we try and run that. I've connected the printer to the computer. Uh, now let me just compile and upload this sketch. And you'll see at the bottom here, we'll get an error message basically about timeouts. Um, so just give that a second while it compiles. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting the STK 500 V2 receive message timeout. And this will just continue on and on until the um, Arduino IDE basically just says, okay, I've had enough and we're done. This is an issue that a lot of people are having. There's a guy on YouTube who suggests pressing the reset button at the right time and hoping that that will work. And I'm sure that works for some people, but what I found that actually works for me is a change in settings. Now, Long story short, the uh, the clone boards from China are not actually the same thing as the real product. They use a different protocol in actually transmitting sketches to the bootloader. Um, now, the, the 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 legitimate boards they use the STK five hundred V two protocol, and that's a um, without getting into too much uh, detail about it. Essentially, it's just the way that your computer is going to communicate with the Arduino twenty five sixty, or sorry, the the GT2560 board that's using the 80 Mega 2560 uh, chipset. It's just the way that the computer is going to communicate to that. The Chinese boards don't use the same protocol as the legitimate ones. And so in order to fix that, we need to tell Arduino that we're going to change the protocol. There's no way to do this in the, in the actual IDE itself. So I'm going to quit that. And I'll show you how we go about fixing it. Essentially, all you need to do is right-click and go Show Package Contents. From here, open up the Contents folder, move into the Java directory, and then scroll down until you find Hardware. Open up Hardware and then go into Arduino, then AVR, and then you'll find these three text files, uh, Boards, Platform, and Programmers.txt. Now, on Windows, the process is very similar. You essentially just navigate to the directory that your Arduino IDE software is installed in, go into the hardware folder, and you'll find these three files here as well. The one that we're going to open up, I, th I believe, is programmers.txt. I will just confirm. No, it's boards.txt, sorry. I'm going to open up boards.txt. Yes, this is the one. I want you to just press Control F or Command F if you're on a Mac, and just search for 2560. And we're going to look for this one here that says mega.name. Arduino Genuo or Genuo Mega or Mega 2560. And then scroll down until we find the section on protocol and speed. Now, by default, I've already edited this, but by default, yours may say something like STK 500 V2. It may say something else there like STR. I can't remember exactly what it was. You need to change this to say wiring, W-I-R-I-N-G. I've got a little piece of paper with the settings written on that. Um, so we're going to use the protocol wiring to communicate with the board. 
And the upload speed that we're going to use, this is essentially the board rate. This is an old technology that's working across serial and essentially, um, lot, this, is, this is a very <laughs> big history on, on serial technology, but this goes way back into the, gee, early 80s, I believe. Anyway, we're going to change the speed that this communicates to 57,600, 57600. Go ahead and save this file just by pressing Command S or Control S or going into File, Save, and then you can close your text edit or notepad software. If you're on Windows and you open that file in notepad, it may not display correctly, so try and open it in something like WordPad or even if you have it on your computer, Notepad++, or even you know Visual Studio Code, that's free now, so you can go ahead and try it in that. Now that we've made these changes, we've essentially told the Arduino IDE how to communicate with the computer, um, sorry, how to communicate the computer to the uh, AT Mega 2560 chipset on the GT2560 motherboard, we can go ahead and open Arduino IDE, um, the one that we've made the changes to. Uh, once that's opened, we can then compile and upload our sketch, and everything should be fine. So here we go, I'm just going to hit compile and upload, and I'll expand this so that you can see what's happening. As you can see, it is it has compiled the um, the binary file, it's uploading it into the motherboard right now and if I just bring my camera around here you'll see a bunch of lights flickering that's good news I'll just leave it on the screen here so that you can see what's happening and I'll put these two videos uh, picture in picture so that, and time it so that you can actually see what's happening there we go, now that firmware has been updated, it's going to go through a validation process just to make sure before it reboots the, um, the uh, GT2560 that the firmware was installed correctly because if it wasn't and then it rebooted, it's going to corrupt itself and you'll most likely not be able to get it working again. This can take a couple of minutes, about 30 seconds or so. Sorry, it can take a couple of seconds or up to a minute, 30 seconds to a minute. There you go, once that's done, the printer will essentially reboot itself and you'll be running the latest version of Marlin. Now obviously this isn't a guide on how to configure Marlin and what you need to do in order to get that working, but this is just a solution to those of you who have been experiencing the problem with read and write timeouts in the Arduino IDE. You shouldn't have to be pressing the reset button just to get your sketches to compile. There is a fundamental problem with the settings um, and the way that the computer is trying to communicate with that board. So hopefully by changing those settings we've come up with a repeatable method of uploading our sketches that works every time. I've been modifying my firmware now for two or three days, changing pretty much everything, getting it all working nice. Um, I've had no problems uploading since changing to this method. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please go ahead and leave a like. Every single like really does help me on this channel. Um, and also, not just that, but, you know, I spent probably eight to ten hours researching this problem, trying to figure out what was going on, just to upload files on my own board, and there were thousands and thousands of people out there who have the exact same problem. So, sharing this video around, hopefully it will help them as well, and get everyone, you know, into a position where they're able to update their firmware on their printers like they should be, um, in this type of open source environment. So once again, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.